In this In Vivo 15 for Mac tutorial, I want to talk about how to code a transcript and how to code directly on the timeline of a media file if you don't have a transcript. I'll also talk about what I think is most useful if you have a lot of video data like I do and where your time might be better spent using a different program other than In Vivo. So first, let's take a look at the media controls a little more carefully. Um, you see that in this case I've got a video imported, the Diana assessment video, and we're looking at the media player controls here. The big triangle in the center is of course play, pause, and stop. The two triangles on either side of the play button are to rewind and go forward in five second intervals continuously. The next arrow with the little line is to tell you to go back just five seconds. And then the controls on the very ends are to go all the way to the beginning of the media file or to go all the way to the end of the media file. In the controls, you can also set the number of seconds you want it to advance. Uh, five seconds is the default. There's another set of player controls here below the transcript. And for the most part, these are used to coordinate the playing of the video with the transcript. There is an exception that's sort of important that I'll show you in a minute. A couple of things that you, sh you might notice is as you click in the transcript, you'll see that there's a blue bar that appears that shows which part of the media has been linked to that row of transcripts. So as I click down below on the transcript rows, you're going to see this blue bar moving to the right. And so that gives you a sense of which part of the media file is playing and how it's connected to each part of the transcript. Another thing you may want to notice from the very beginning is how coding stripes work. Right now I've got coding stripes set to show all of them. And I'm also going to turn on the highlight button, uh, coding for all codes or cases. And you've got coding stripes that are below the timeline here. And you also have coding stripes that are to the right of the transcript. Right now I've only got one bit of the timeline coded to the assessment category. You see it here and you see the, the coding stripe. And this is the highlight. I've got highlights turned on. If I were to turn that off, the little yellow uh, highlight goes away. So on the right hand side, I've not coded any of that data, but do notice that the assessment category is, we, we see it here with a little dot next to it. So in, in a sense, it's showing us that there's a portion of this transcript file in the waveform that has been coded to the assessment category, but it doesn't show us which one. So the coding is actually separate. When you code to the timeline, it's coding just the start and stop times. You see it up here. When we code some of the words here in the transcript, you're going to see the t coding stripes appear to the right. So let's just see a little bit about how this works. It's easy to code transcripts. This is one of the powerful things about in vivo. In vivo is a very powerful program for analyzing textual data. And in this case, it, it helps to have the textual data connected to the video and it makes it convenient for you. It's not a real powerful program for analyzing video data. There are others that, that in my view, work better than that. But for example, I'm going to code the first line of my transcript and note that the blue bar shows me which part of the media timeline or media waveform that it's in. So I'm just going to highlight, just like you do anyplace else, and I'm going to open up the codes here. I'm going to code that to the, the code that says Adult Demo Page. So I'm going to, again, highlight that. And then I can just drag and drop it to Adult Demo Page. Of course, I could have also coded it with the code button, or I could have right-clicked. So I can use any of the usual ways of coding textual data in my transcript. Note now that the coding stripe shows me that, it, that it's been coded to adult demo page. There are a few things that make this really helpful. So I'm going to go to that category and we see that the text has been coded there. Going back to the Diana assessment video. And if I go to the next row of the transcript, I'm going to code to the child who's reading the adult print. So I'm going to connect there and you see we get an additional coding stripe. Now notice what's happening up above under the timeline. You start to see the same categories that we're coding into the transcript repeated here, but without showing you which part 
of the timeline has been coded because the timeline has not been coded. You're coding them separately. I'm coding the words. Up here, I'd be coding the timeline. And they are represented differently when you browse a node. If I wanted to play the particular bit of video that goes with a transcript, I can come down and use this big right arrow. Uh, there's and it plays exactly the bit of data that has been connected to this bit of transcript. So if we're browsing a node, if we look at the one that says reads adult print, there's the text. And of course, if I wanted to understand the context of that better, I could go back to the Diana assessment video here using the link. And we see it both in the context here, but we could also play it just like I did by using the, the big right arrow triangle. So that is very convenient to be able to move back and forth between a transcript and the actual video context where you can hear the, the intonation, you can see what comes before and after and so forth. Now what happens if you have a video for which you don't have a transcript? So to code directly onto the timeline without a transcript, you're going to need to play the video and mark this, the beginning of the timestamp and the ending of the timestamp where you want to code. I think that the controls for doing this are a little clunky, especially if you need to be really precise in the beginning and ending. It does help to expand the size of the waveform to see that a little bit better. But I think one way to do that is just simply to select a segment on the timeline. And then when you hit the play button, it's going to go to the beginning of that. So as you listen to that, then you have the opportunity to change the beginning point of the selection by using this left arrow in brackets. And then when you get ready to stop the selection, you can use the right arrow in brackets. I think that's the easiest way that I've been able to see. So let's let's play this a little bit and I'll see if I can refine this selection a little bit. So I decided to start the selection when the adult started to say, there's your P.I. painting, where the, the adult is essentially reading the child's print. And then at the end of that, I, click, I clicked the right selection area, and you see that it changed the selection to this very small portion. And I can replay that by using the play button, and we'll see if that seems to be the selection I like. Well, I didn't quite get the there's your P part in there, so I'm going to click and drag this selection just a little bit larger and try it again. There's your P -I -T. When I'm satisfied with the selection, I can just go up to the, I cannot drag and drop, but I can go up to the code button and I'll go into the assessment category where it says uh, rereads print and I've coded that segment of the timeline to that category. So let's look at that. So what you see here is that you see only the beginning and ending timestamp. Of course, there was no transcript. So if you had a lot of these in your file, you're just going to see a bunch of timestamps. Uh, obviously, you can't search that as a word query, which is a very powerful feature of InVivo, but not available, of course, for timestamps. So if I had this in my node, I can go to the original and you see that it is highlighted, the segment that I wanted to see. I can play that. So coding on the timeline could be useful in limited cases if you didn't have a lot of video data, but if you really are wanting to have extensive coding of video data, this would be pretty clunky to code and also probably not fine-grained enough for you. In my view, the strength here is when video data has been linked to a transcript. It allows you to code the transcript and then to get back quickly to viewing that section of the video data.